ओम सर्वे भवंतु सुखिना सर्वे सन्तु निरामय सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मां कश्चित् दुःखम् आप्नुयात् ओम शांति ही शांति ही शांति ही रिस्पेक्टेड गुरुजी एंड गुरुजी अदर रिस्पेक्टेड डिग्निटीज प्रेजेंट हियर डी members and office bearers of Baroda Management Association and the Students Union, BBA Students Union and uh, professors present here and my very dear young friends. It's a pleasure meeting you all this morning. The program was postponed many times but it has finally materialized. I am very happy. For various reasons, I had to be, I was out to America and uh, for the World Parliament Religions in Toronto and then uh, another lecture tour in USA and so it was getting postponed but finally and even two days back I didn't know that I'll be able to make it but I have been able to make it. Suddenly there was uh, some relapse in the health and but by God's grace everything is well, all is well <laughs> and so I'm very happy to talk to you and I am especially privileged that uh, we have shared the dais with uh, I have shared the dais with Sri Narayan Guruji many times it is for the first time that I am in the opposite camp on the reverse way <laughs> most of the time I have been there and he has been here it is for the first time he is there and I am here that is his greatness I must say that is his greatness that shows his greatness You see, Guruji becoming a Shishya. <laughs> so that's a great thing. I'm very happy. Narayan Guruji is also present. But it's a very difficult job, no? When the Guruji is here. So whatever I have learned from him, I'll try to reproduce. So the fourth wave of management leadership. What is this fourth wave about? You see, the first wave of management was the British style of management when Taylor's method of work measurement was in vogue. The second wave of management was the American style of management when Peter Drucker became the guru of all. The third wave of management was the Japanese style of management when TQM, Total Quality Management, zero defect became in vogue and all started getting their certificates for TQM and ISO. Now slowly but slowly but steadily but surely the fourth wave of management is coming not only in India more so in the western countries. What is that wave? That is the fourth wave of management is the holistic style of management based on Indian ethos based on Vedanta philosophy. The Newsweek magazine, which is brought out from New York, has given it the word Karma Capitalism. And in a news item it says that many companies in America now are adopting this fourth wave, that is they have given it Karma Capitalism in the form of lectures, programs on Vedanta philosophy, on the lectures on Bhagavad Gita and also regular courses on stress management including meditation yoga and uh, this karma capitalism helps the companies in overcoming the obstacles which are met with during the tough competition that the 21st century places before them. So this fourth wave, why it has come? There are many reasons. Number one, globalization has come to stay, whether you like it or not, at least on economic front. With the globalization, it's a global market, liberalization has come, so very tough competition 
and because of the tough competition many companies are feeling the pinch of it and so they have to adopt the strategies which will be con- which will be in consonance with a uh, meeting this great challenge it is at that time they can realize the teaching of bhagavad gita karmani vadikaraste ma karmani vadikarastu ma phaleshu kadashana ma karma phal hetur bhu mate sangostha karmani ma phaleshu kadashana when the result is not coming up when the at the time of success everybody is okay but what about when the failure comes when you are not able to meet the competition don't break down that is what bhagavad gita says and go on with the spirit of detachment this message is very important in the competitive age that is why now they are adopting yoga karma su kaushalam buddhi yukta jahati ha ubhe sukrit duskute tasmat yogay yujyasva yoga karma su kaushalam dexterity in action is yoga this efficiency this proficiency which is not only mere proficiency from the external point of view the physical point of view along with the spirit of detachment it is this that is giving them an edge over the other companies so this corporate sector is adopting this fourth wave and with the liberalization and with the competition another thing is that come communication technology has undergone tremendous transformation with internet and uh, facebook and all social media the world has been united as never before so your competitor comes to know of your strategies within a minute and you must take an action or a decision before that happens so you have to be extra proactive and for that what is needed is an intuitive faculty of mind so mr thishan she is a management she is management expert from amsterdam she says the world view has changed our scientific theory has changed have changed the quantum mechanics has come in the scientific theory and all that things have changed the world has changed but our management theories have remained static so we must have a paradigm shift in our management theories and management philosophy and management approach and if we do not have a paradigm shift then we will have paradigm paralysis we have to prepare for the paradigm paralysis if we cannot have the paradigm shift in our management theories which is in consonance with the modern quantum mechanics and with the modern trend with the changing world where the world has been united as never before so it is because of this globalization and liberalization it has become very very important that we have the fourth wave of management and alvin toffler says darwin said survival of the fittest but alvin toffler says no survival of the fastest you have to move very fast the faster faster will will we will have to be faster otherwise you will be lagged behind now in that case you have to have a special capacity and so the fifth management has become very important you know when we are talking about productivity we are talking about maximum utilization of all the resources and then we are talking about 4m what is that 4m management of 4m's that gives you productivity what is the 4m's number 1 management of materials that is materials management second management of machines production planning and control third management of money financial management and fourth management of man that is pers- that is human resource development hrd personal department now it is called hrd so management of men but now the fifth m is becoming most important what is that management of mind if you cannot manage your mind you will not be able to have the intuitive faculty 
which will give you poor active decision before the your competitor takes up the position you must be able to foresee it that requires manager with mind second thing concentration of mind when we are talking about yoga karma so kaushalam for each and every action if you really want dexterity and proficiency action you must have concentration of mind so the american thinker said that the secret of success in trade in war in every management of human affairs is the concentration of mind immersion ralph waldo emerson said the secret of success in trade in war in every management of human affairs is the concentration of mind and swami vivekananda said if i had to do my education over again i will not undergo the present system of education first i will learn how to control my mind how to concentrate in my mind information i can have at my own will you know it is not available the google search click and you get all the information so education is not the amount of information that goes into your brain and runs and digest all your life so education is being and becoming and so concentration of mind he had so much a power of concentration and yet he wanted more because there are many students here so i would like to say if you really want success in studies if you really want good result you must have this the most important thing you must remember concentration of mind swami ji vivekananda so much of concentration concentration yet he wanted more how much he had i will give you only two examples you know i am coming from ramkrishna mission which is having its headquarters belumat and uh, it was started by ramkrishna mission was started by swami vivekananda himself in 1897 after returning from the west and there are 200 branches all over the world the headquarters is belumat near calcutta by the side of the ganges swami vivekananda started this belumat in 1898 If you go to Belumat, you will find a big temple of Sri Ramakrishna. Just behind that, there is a two-storied building. On the first floor, there is a room in which Swami Vivekananda used to stay. If you go now, you will find as if Swami Vivekananda is still there. His table, his chair, his clothes, his stick, his musical instrument, everything as it is. You feel as if Swami Vivekananda is still there. On 4 July 1902, at the age of 39 years, he left his body. now what i am telling the incident happened just before that before few days before that swami vivekananda's disciple sharachand chakravarti he writes in his diary that when he went there he saw so many books swami vivekananda was reading the book the name of the book is encyclopedia britannica you know big volumes they were all spread all over the floor and swami was reading this happens is my god so many books it will take whole lifetime to finish all these books somebody said what do you say i have already finished this 10 volumes only few days back these volumes have come i have already finished 10 volumes and i am now reading the 11th volume what i can't believe such big volumes you have finished within few days 10 volumes i can't believe somebody said you don't don't believe okay from this first 10 volumes you ask any question that you want to ask and the disciple asked many questions and swami ji replied all the questions and correct replies sometimes quoting the very language of the book then the disciple was very much astonished swami ji this is a miracle swami ji said this is not miracle what is this this is the power of concentration of mind if you have concentration of mind 10 hours study can be in one hour many students ask me sir how is it possible 10 hours study in one hour i say it is possible because at present you are doing one hour study in 10 hours <laughs> take up the book The eyes are in the eyes are on the book. And where is the mind? कल देखा वो टीवी में विले वो हीरो जा रहा था विलेन के पीछे उस रास्ते से इस रास्ते से जल्दी पकड़ का और तू किस रास्ते जा रहा देख पिया? Oh my God! कितना घंटा चला गया मैं क्या पढ़ रहा था क्या आ गया? होता है कि नहीं? बोलो होता है ना? हाँ तो अभी ten hours study when hours study we are doing in ten hours. when concentration of mind will be there 10 hours study in 1 hour now not only that in study in music in sports games in every field you will excel if you have concentration of mind so when swami ji went to the west second time first time as you know he went for the first time in 1893 for delivering his story speech at the parliament of religious at just now we are having the 125th anniversary of 
Swami Vivekan Chicago address is in the parliament religions. Imagine what an impact it created. 125th anniversary is being created now celebrated all over the world. Just now I am coming from US and participating in the world parliament religions. This is the 7th edition. First was in 1893. So Swamiji went there and that changed the whole paradigm. And the history was created when he delivered his speech. So for three and a half years he was there for teaching Vedanta. 1897 he came back. 1899 he again went at the invitation of the Americans there for delivering speeches on Vedanta. So this time he went to the western coast. In California there is a place called Camp Taylor. Beautiful place. So Swamiji went there and he was crossing a, crossing a river over a bridge. It was a wooden bridge at that time. When I went there it was not wooden. But at that time Swamiji went. It was a wooden bridge. And Swamiji was crossing. That time he saw four cowboys trying to shoot at the axle that are floating in water. Now there was a string of 12 axles that was floating there on the, on the water. And these four cowboys, they were trying to shed the axles, but the axles were going up and down. The whole string was going up and down with the water. So their shots were going in vain. Swamiji saw for some time, then he could not help smiling. Now, these four cowboys, they, come, they become very much annoyed. What? You are laughing at us? Is it a small job to shoot at the axles that are floating in water? Okay, we give you the challenge. Let us see, how do you do it? And they handed over the gun to Swami Vivekananda. Now what to do? Swami Vivekananda took up the gun, aimed at the axles, fut, 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 fut. Twelve axles gone in twelve shots. And these four cowboys became very much astonished. Swami, how long you are practicing? We are practicing from five years. We could not do it. How long you are practicing? Swamiji said, my dear friend, I am holding the gun for the first time. Huh? First time? And you shoot all the excess? That is a miracle. Swamiji said, that is not a miracle. What is that? Power of concentration of mind. So if you have concentration of mind, you can conquer the world. Now, how to get concentration of mind? That is a million dollar question. <laughs> so remember a small formula. You are all from faculty, BBA, no problem. Little mathematics, you know. C is directly proportional to P. Where C is equal to? And P is equal to? Purity of mind. Purer the mind, greater is the concentration of mind. Now, how to get purity of mind? Another equation. P is directly proportional to F. Where P is equal to purity of mind, F is equal to food. Food that is not what we take only through mouth. We are taking intact from ears, eyes. So, remember the three monkeys of Gandhiji? Buramat dekho, Buramat, Buramat bolo. Buramat dekho, Buramat suno, Buramat bolo. You all of you know these three monkeys, no? Gandhiji's three monkeys. Don't take, don't see evil, don't listen to evil, don't speak evil. Now I will tell you about three monkeys of Switzerland. When Swami, one of our Swamiji's went for preaching Vedanta in Switzerland long many years back. By the side of a lake, there are beautiful lakes, you know, in Switzerland, all full of lakes, big, big lakes. By the side of a lake, he, got, he saw an image of three monkeys, but very strange. So far he had seen three monkeys of, in which one monkey having two eyes closed, second monkey, two ears closed, third monkey, mouth closed. Here he saw in Switzerland three monkeys, one monkey, one eye closed, one open. Second monkey, one ear closed, one open. Third monkey, half mouth was half open. Now he, he was very much astonished. He had never seen such monkeys. Now what are these three monkeys trying to give the message? He remember, he just went on thinking for a long time. Suddenly he remembered a shloka from the Vedas and he got the meaning. What was the shloka? Bhadram karne bhi shunuyama deva Bhadram pashe makshabir jatra Tirai rangai sustuvagam sastanu bihi Vyashema deva hi tayyadayuhu Satina indro vridhashava Satina pusha vishwabeda Satina stakshu aristanemi Satina obriyakpati dhadhatu Bhadram karne bhi shunuyama deva Listen to good things, auspicious things One year is closed, don't listen to bad things But one year is the one, but listen to good things One eye is closed don't see evil, but one eye is open, see good things. Don't see bad pictures in TV, but see good pictures in TV, some good programs in TV. Don't read bad books that 
decreases your concentration of mind and fills your mind with all types of filth. Read the books which gives you inspiration, which gives you power, which gives you concentration. Read the books of Swami Vivekan, read the books of self-development, read Gita, Upanishads, read your scriptures, whatever scriptures that gives you power, read those books. Half mouth is closed, don't speak evil for others. But half mouth is open, but have a word of appreciation for others. Don't criticize others, but have a word of appreciation for others. So that means making good use of our senses. If we take good food through our mouth, through our ears, through our eyes, don't take bad food, then what happens? Our mind becomes pure. And when mind becomes pure, we get concentration of mind. C is directly proportional to P, where C is equal to concentration and P is equal to purity. Another thing, if you really want concentration, if you really want success in studies, in sports, music, everything, we must have control over our mind. Control, how to get control of mind? Control of mind will come when we have control over life. How do get we control over life? If we regularize our life. Many students come to me, then I ask them, why Savarna Ketla Oge Uthe? Kai Nakki Ni Odi Chhav Oge Saath Oge Rai Vaita Navai Oge Why what is the time you go to bed? Ketla Oge Suva Jai Chhe Bhai Kai Nakki Ni Das Oge Agyar Oge Saru Pishu Teke Oge TV Ma Why Taro Bhanwano Time Su Chhe Kai Nakki Ni Mood Ave Te Bhani Lo Why Taro Jammano Time Su Chhe I said, no, 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 ते एक आगर तब नक्की नहीं, ते एक आगर तब नक्की करो, उठानो टाइम नक्की, दुआनो टाइम नक्की, भड़वान टाइम नक्की, ते एक आगर तब एकदम नक्की। So have a fixed routine, have a routine, timetable. Oh, my time life becomes monotonous. No, you try to change the timetable from time to time. Have a different timetable for your holidays and don't worry if you are not able to follow even if you are able to 50% at least 50% you are regular now you are fully regularly irregular you are now regularly irregular at least now become little regular by having a fixed time but some people you know they prepare a wonderful timetable every day they are getting at 4 o'clock from tomorrow I will get up at 4 a.m. and first day pahle din puncture no have a practical practicable timetable so if you do that if you have practicable timetable, make your life regular. Regular life will give you control over your life. Control over your life will give you control over your mind. Control over your mind will give you concentration. My concentration mind will give you success in everything. Not only studies, in every sphere of life. The same thing applies for corporate sector. If you are a supervisor, you are a manager, you are a leader, it doesn't matter. But concentration is required at every each and everything. Even a pilot requires, if he misses this concentration for a second, there is a big accident. Everybody requires. An engine driver requires, a car driver requires, a pilot requires. They require it much more because one small failure in concentration can mean a great disaster. So this is all about the management of mind. The fifth management is becoming very important and that is the fourth way of management is required. Another thing is that stress level is increased. Everybody is under tension. You ask anybody, I am under tension. How are you? Fine. And then you ask any problem, oh my God, so many problems, if you put into the computer, it will not be fed. So many problems, everybody is facing, everybody is under stress. I asked a small girl, I say, what, how are you? I am under tension. Hey? I can understand your grandparents are under tension because any moment they will be put into the old age home, you know, old age coming in India and also. And I can understand your father's tension because any time VRS may come, VRS means voluntary retirement scheme which comes now compulsorily. <laughs> compulsory voluntary retirement scheme. I can understand your mom's uh, tension, you know, so much of financial management, this management, management of the mother-in-law, management of the husband, management of the children, 
and most important in India is management of the maid servant. <laughs> Not available. In America, no problem. I told in America, I was talking to some people that it's good that you don't have maid servant here and so you don't have problems. Some of them say we are the maid servant. You know, they are so much, they are getting so much of money, I couldn't understand that they are the maid servant. I said, you see, this is the problem. In, the, in America, your maid servant getting more money than you, than your salary. So you can't afford in America, here they have a white servant from. Anyway, then I asked the Lord, what is your problem? He said, do you know Swamiji, I am a senior KG. <laughs> Last year I was in junior KG, I got first class first. My mom has told, this time also you must get first class first, so I am under tension. <laughs> so the students are under tension, professors are under tension, everybody under tension. This is their age of tension. So that is why Chicago Best Research Corporation has surveyed that 40% of the companies are having regular courses on stress management. And the, and the western models of stress management are not working. You know what is the western model of stress management? Western psychologists they say, you see, do you know why stress comes? When you do not express your feelings, they go inside your subconscious mind, they create complexes and that creates stress and that creates strains. So you must express your feelings. My God, if I express my feelings, I will lose my job. Because when my boss was my boss was coming out from the home, he had a great tussle with his wife. He couldn't say anything to the wife and wife went on telling so many things, but he could not tell his wife because who will cook. So he pocketed that insult and came and without any reason go go on he went on firing at me. And I wanted to pay back in the same coin. I also know how to pay back in the same coin, but what to do, I will lose my job, so I pocket that insult. That insult goes into the subconscious mind, creates stress and they get the strain. So the western psychologist says, no, no, you must express your feelings. My God, if I express my feelings, then I will lose my job. Don't worry, we have got a solution. What is the solution? Go to the market, purchase voodoo dolls, head diaries, punching bags, available. Along with the voodoo dolls, you will get the pins also. Come back to your house. Close the doors and windows of your room. Put the voodoo door on your table. Now, write down the name of your boss or your mother-in-law or your wife. Whomsoever you want to put your stress on, write down the name. And now pins are available. Blue pins for injuring your boss. Black pins are available for serious injury. Red pins are also available. Just give and the boss is murdered. And you will have a nice sleep without any tranquilizer. But problem is that next day again the boss is sitting on the chair, what to do? <laughs> you solved your problem, stress management last night, again he is sitting on the chair, what to do? So these are all temporary solutions. That is why, that is why the whole world is now coming at the feet of meditation, yoga, Indian ethos, holistic style of management, fourth way of management. Why? Because other stress management methods are not working. Now, 20 million Americans having regular meditation and yoga. International Yoga Day, 21st June. Why it was accepted? When the Prime Minister of India put the proposal on 25th September 2014. Normally it takes two years. Within four months the proposal was passed by the United Nations General Assembly. On 11th of December 2014. Not with majority, unanimously. Out of 198 countries, 178 countries were present. All the countries told, yes, 21st June should be celebrated as International Yoga Day. And now we are celebrating it. <laughs> All these are the indications what Swami Vivekanand said after coming back from the American, America and Europe. When he came in 1897, he was delivering a speech in Madras. When he said, awake, awake, great ones. And then he said, India shall conquer the whole world by spiritual culture. I don't want anything less than that. What did he mean? What he meant was, Indian spiritual culture, when it comes, Indian spiritual culture speaks of non-violence. Indian culture speaks of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. Indian spiritual culture speaks about harmony of religions. Acceptance of all religions is equally true. Indian culture speaks 
of universal brotherhood these are the values which will save the whole world in a globalized world we can have only global peace if there is a global civilization that can only come by indian spiritual culture because indian spiritual culture talks about global civilization from thousands of years sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashti dukha bhag bhavet this is the equation this is the formula sarve let all be happy let all be healthy that is what we have been praying for last thousands of years by millions of people are praying like that that is our indian spiritual culture that has to spread and swami ji prophesied that is coming because if we want to survive and that is why it is coming so stress management based on indian ethos based on meditation and yoga is becoming very popular another thing 21st century is the century of knowledge workers peter drucker in his book managing in the new millennium he says managing in the new millennium he says managers and executives from now onwards are going to be more and more ineffectual with no authority whatsoever or they were subordinates i think you must be recognizing it this is what is happening managers and executives are becoming more and more ineffectual with no authority whatsoever over the subordinate because they are all knowledge workers you can control very easily with fire and hire method the blue collar job workers that in the previously 90% workforce was blue collar job 10% was white collar job it is now reverse 90% white collar job 10% blue collar job sometimes in some automotive companies there are only two persons blue collar job one for opening the main gate one for opening the computers rest all done by robots and by computers and automatics at that time how do you control the white collar job people who are more knowledgeable than you and that is why the fourth wave is talking about servant leadership robert greenleaf wrote this book in 1976 servant leadership now it is become very popular because of the the changes that have come up in the whole world because it is now the sanctuary of knowledge workers you cannot lead the people in the way we are leading again previously you have to be humble so what is servant leadership that is serving not with precept but with example service with sacrifice with the spirit of unselfishness with the spirit of egolessness if you are an egoist leader mind you you are not going to get success in the 21st century you take it for granted you have to be humble you have to have humility so swami vivekanand told this much before robert greenleaf he talked about servant leadership and he practiced it also and gandhi ji also practiced and krishna also become shri krishna also practiced it he became a sarthi charioter of arjuna though he was a king maker he practiced it servant leadership but swami vivekanand gave the beautiful example beautiful note he said what is servant leadership he said sirdar wahi sardar ye yeah, sardar ji baithe hain aur wo sardar ji pagdi wale nahi sardar matlab hota hai jo sirdar jo sir de sakta hai wahi sardar ban sakta hai sardar matlab leader who can be leader who can sacrifice his head what do you mean cutting the head no that is humility sacrificing your ego sacrificing your selfishness that leader is now going to move the world when dr kalam came to porbandar 13 february 2002 for inaugurating one of the 81 school buildings that he had that we had constructed as a part of work rehabilitation project in by ramkrishna mission six colonies 81 school buildings one of the buildings was uh, inaugurated by dr abj abdul kalam at that time he had not yet become president 13 february 2002 he became president of the indian in june only so that time he talked to 3000 youths wonderful speech followed by good interaction and then he was asked this question what is the source of your inspiration then dr kalam said normally i do not leak out this secret but this is the right place to leak out this secret then he said i was the monitor of my school i was an a standard my headmaster called me tonight you call all the students they must listen to the running commentary 15th august 1947 india will get independence let them all listen to running commentary no tv at the time radio so he said i brought all the children 
all the students we all listen we could not understand the speeches because we knew only tamil we neither knew english or hindi but we were happy india has become independent then dr kalam says next day in the newspaper next day i saw the newspaper two photographs first photograph i saw i was happy to see both the photographs first photograph i saw pandit jawala nehru the first prime minister of india hoisting the indian flag that is the first photograph he said and then dr kalam said by the side was the second photograph that second photograph was my primary education was my secondary education was my college education and was my life education and what was that photograph in that photograph it was shown that the person who did maximum who tried maximum who sacrificed maximum for maximum for achieving the independence of india was not celebrating the independence of india on that day 15th august 1947 no what he was doing he was walking barefooted in the streets of calcutta wiping the tears of the people who were affected by no only riots dr kalam said that i could understand what is nobility leadership mahatma gandhi he has shown what is the liberal the nobility of leadership for sacrificing you are ahead for getting the reward you are last when you get this credit you take the old discredit on your shoulders when you get credit tell my team members they are able they are the persons they should be celebrated and they should be felicitated that is servant leadership that was shown by krishna that was shown by gandhi that was shown by swami vivekananda himself you know swami vivekananda himself do you know the name of the institute that he started in the name of his guru it is not vivekananda mission ram krishna mission do you know who became the first president of ram krishna mission all india not swami vivekan he made his brother disciple swami brahmana the first president of for just as gandhi ji for sacrifice he was first for getting the reward he was last he could have become the prime minister of india swami vivekan did not become the first president of ram krishna mission mission he made his guru by swami vivekan and his swami brahmana and his as first president he said if my brother disciple say my whole life will be going in cleaning the latrines of belur mat whatever they will order i will carry out he practiced servant leadership with the result when he passed away when he left his body in meditation on 4th of july 1902 there were only five centers of the ramkesh samathan mission one in new york four in india at present there are 225 official branches all over the world 150 in india rest abroad and apart from that more than 1000 centers which are not directly affiliated with ramkrishna mission and so many 14 indoor hospitals 90 outdoor hospitals 6000 educational institutions big tribal and rural development projects and all that happening after the passing away of the leader normally what happens when a person dies his obituary note is the last note that you get and here what is happening swami vivekananda left his body in 1902 after 150 150 years 150th birth anniversary was celebrated for four years we wanted only one year it went on for four years and now the 125th anniversary of vishakhapatnam address is going on all over the world so just imagine why it is happening because he practiced servant leadership another thing there are two more things that i am already crossing my time still i this two they are there are many things it's a very vast topic but i will confine myself to two more points one is we are talking about csr corporate social responsibility is very important but do you know these ideas are there in our upanishads already the roots are there ishavasam idam sarvam yatkinch jagatyam jagat tena taktena bhunji tha ma gridaka sasiddhanam the whole world is permitted by one universal consciousness so what you should do you should enjoy the world how by sacrifice how can i enjoy the world by sacrifice you don't have to sacrifice your latest model car or latest model mobile or latest model house no what you do sacrifice is your attachment to them you have to sacrifice your attachment if you cannot at- sacrifice your attachment you will be in for great misery this is the principle of trusteeship management that is given there in the isha washup nishad and that was broadcasted by mahatma gandhi made popular but much before that for the first time in the corporate sector it was preached by swami vivekananda when swami vivekananda was in chicago 
as you deliver as you know it for delivering his story speech at the parliament regions then he continued there for three and a half years swami ji was in chicago at the time the richest person of the world was john d rockefeller the pet, the emperor of petroleum industry at that time he was going through a very bad patch his hair had become bald no hair he had become bald no hair he had become thin a lot waist he was very much anxious and he was on terrible depression at that time somebody suggested to him why don't you come to my friend's house there is an indian yogi who has come and by getting his advice perhaps you may feel better rockefeller said what i to go to a beggar for getting advice no i'll not go you know we are all beggars we live on charity <laughs> we are monks we don't earn so he said what i go to beggar i will not go he did not go but one fine morning suddenly rockefeller came to the place where swami ji was staying he called the bell the butler opened the door he went inside swami ji was not inside this drawing room so he went to his study room and you know swami ji had tremendous power of concentration just now i told you so he was fully absorbed then he did not notice rockefeller coming rockefeller stood for some time then he knocked at the table then swami ji stood up then swami ji looked at rockefeller said i am rockefeller swami ji said what do you want now he was not prepared for this type of treatment because rockefeller means the president of america would get up and here is the beggar sitting in his chair and wanting and asking what do you want he became very much annoyed i don't want anything then swami ji then why have you come now he had no answer because he had come without invitation then swami vivekananda said my dear rockefeller i know why you have come you come here because you do not have peace of mind then he started narrating many incidents from the life of rockefeller which no one else knew except rockefeller then he became very much very much anxious he said how do you come to know who has told all these things to you how did you come to know all these secrets who has told all these things to you swami ji smiled and said do you think it is necessary somebody should tell me i can see through your mind as i can see through a glass self then he was very much under my god he has come to know all my secrets then swami vivekan said my dear rockefeller i'll give you a piece of advice remember you are not the owner of your wealth you are only trustee of your wealth you are only custodian of your wealth utilize this money for removing the sufferings of millions of people you will immediately get peace of mind there is no other way by which you can get peace of mind and talk fellow become very much annoyed how dare you talk to me like that and he left abruptly as abruptly he had come but after a few days again he came <laughs> similar fashion called the bell the butler opened the door he went inside swami ji was not in drawing so he went to the study room swami ji fully absorbed again he knocked at the table then swami ji looked up then rockefeller put a piece of paper in which he had made announcement of a very huge donation for a public cause then swami ji read it rockefeller said now you must thank me i have followed your advice <laughs> swami ji said well it is for you to thank me <laughs> because by following my advice you will get peace of mind which cannot be purchased by millions of dollars in the market that was the first very huge donation by rockefeller for a public cause we don't know what is the cause most probably it is my guess that it was for the university of chicago because in 2010 when i went to the university of chicago i saw there is a bust of rockefeller where it is stored in 1894 rockefeller made a huge donation for university of chicago and that's how the university of chicago was built up anyway whatever it is but that was a huge donation then 1913 rockefeller started rockefeller foundation from that rockefeller foundation many researches have been done including david borlock made a research on wheat drought resistant wheat which saved millions of people from starvation that was because of that why because rockefeller foundation so rockefeller foundation has done so much of good to humanity why it was done how it was done because of the inspiration from swami vivekananda and now bill gates is also following the same thing he was asked this question how did you get the inspiration said by from the books of swami vivekananda have you read any books he said i do not go to bed without reading a few pages from books of swami vivekananda i could not believe at that time but afterwards and i learned that he has made billa milinda and bill gates foundation with 30 billions of dollars and every year he is a person who is doing maximum charity now i can understand that he must have got some inspiration from the books of swami vivekananda whatever it is this corporate social responsibility 
CSR is very important. It's very good that the government of India has told that 2% of these profits should go for the public cause. This is the best way we can solve the problems of the whole world. Do you know what are the problems of the whole world? 10% of the people are having 90% of the wealth of the whole world. These 10% of the people are so rich, they are influenced by affluenza, not influenza. Because they are too affluent, they are not getting sleep with any number of tranquilizers and ultimately committing suicide. So these people not having peace of mind because too much of wealth. And 40% of the people in, in the whole world, they are so much hungry, they do not have food, so they are also not getting sleep because they are not having food. These people are not, get, not getting peace because they have too much of wealth. These people are suffering because they have less wealth. Make, make both of them together. Let these wealthy people give some of their money, some of their money for removing the food, for removing the problems of these poor people. What will happen? These people will get peace of mind without any trouble. They can sleep, and these people also will get food. Double it, one. double faide ki baat hai na. Gujarat mein kuch bhi bolna faide usu tha se, double faide tha se. Jene je garib che, ne faide tha se, je paisa wala che ne vadare faide tha se, atmatya mati bachi ja se. So this is the way Swami Vivekananda. Solve this problem of today, today's main problem, bridging the gap between have and have nots. He has suggested trusteeship management is the best thing to CSR. Finally, now we want success. The fourth wave says success will come not only with IQ and EQ, but second, the third thing is necessary that is SQ. Dana Zuha, she is a professor in Oxford University. She has written a book. The name of the book is SQ, Spiritual Intelligence. The ultimate intelligence, where she says, neurologically, physiologically, biologically, psychologically, from every point of view, there is a contouring evidence. There is something called SQ, which is the basis of both IQ and EQ. What is IQ? Intelligence quotient. IQ will tell you how to play the game of life. What is EQ? EQ will tell you how to play the game of life under change circumstances, which change strategies. And what is SQ? SQ will tell you whether to play the game of life at all or not. <laughs> that is your choice. What is the meaning? What is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of life? Why we are here on this life, on this earth, and what we want to achieve before we die? That is SQ. Dana Zohar says we are unfortunately living in a dumb society where we have forgotten our basic purpose of human life. And he and she has given a beautiful example. By the side of the Mexican coast, there was a management consulted city. And at a little distance, there was a fisherman sleeping in his boat. It was afternoon. So the management consulted, hey, what are you doing? Why are you not fishing? Then that man said, sir, you know what happened? In the morning, I got a big catch, a very big fish. I sold it, so I got good amount of money. And that is good enough for my two days needs. My quota is over, and so I am enjoying. What? Is there any quota system here? You should go for more fishing. You should have more money. But what I do with extra money? Why? Deposit. Deposit. He never heard the word deposit. Yes, deposit. Open a bank account. Jandan <laughs> Yudna. Open a bank account and deposit. Then when you go on depositing, when there is a lot of deposit, you purchase another boat. Then second boat, you will get more money. What I do? Again deposit. Get the third boat. Go on increasing the boat. Then you will become CEO of a multinational company. Then you move your headquarters from Mexico to New York and branch change and open branches all over the world. Then naturally when you change all the when you branch, open branches all over the world, you will have to travel a lot. And so you will have blood pressure, you will have bypass surgery. And when three bypass surgeries are over and doctor says no more, then you retire. Say so send the, all the companies, come back to me. I am an investment expert from Harvard. <laughs> I will tell you how to invest the money. When you invest like that, you will get fixed amount of income and you will be able to sleep nicely without tranquilizers. I was sleeping nicely, it is you who woke me up. <laughs> For sleeping nicely is such a roundabout process. Dana Zohar says, this fisherman has got low IQ, he doesn't know how to make money. This management expert has got high IQ, he knows how to make money. But this fisherman has got high SQ, he knows the purpose of life is to have happiness and peace in life. But this management expert has missed this goal. He says, for first 50 years, 
waste your wealth, health for getting the wealth. Next 50 years, waste that wealth for getting back the health which never comes back. That is not a sign of wisdom. That is not SQ. So this SQ is very important. How to get SQ is a million dollar question. Come to Ramakrishna Mission, Vivekan Memorial, Vododra. Go to the bookshop, purchase some books, beautiful book world. Go, there is a room where Swami Vivekan himself stayed as the guest of the Den Diwan Mani Bhai, Jash Bhai. He stayed, Swami Vivekan stayed here. There are only 15 places, places in the whole world where Swami Vivekan stayed, have been converted into memories. Three are in America. I just now had been to one of them, Bridgely Manor. Then South, South Pasadena and Thousand and Park, that I visited recently, 12 are in India. Out of which one, three are in Gujarat, Limdi, Porbandar and Baroda. Baroda, just opposite circuit house, there is a bungalow, Dilaram bungalow, where Swami Vivekan stayed as the guest of the Den Divan Mani Bhai Jashbhai. Go and meditate there. You will find what is peace, what is meditate there. And you will get the practical guidance on meditation. There is a beautiful Vivekanan book world. Purchase the books, read the books every day, meditate every day. And I end with this sentence of Swami Vivekananda. How to get SQ? There are many more methods that are available in the market. But the best thing that I can get, tell you is, here Swami Vivekananda given the whole gist of Vedanta, the whole gist of fourth wave of management, the whole gist how to practice this fourth wave of management. Everything has been given in one paragraph by Swami Vivekananda in his book on Raj Yoga. What is that? Each soul is potentially divine. The goal of human life is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature external and internal. Do this either by work or worship or psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of these and be free. This is the whole of religion. Doctrines, dogmas, rituals, worship, temples, churches, mosques are but second unities. So this is manifesting the divinity through any of the four yogas, Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Nan Yoga and Karma Yoga. And Swami Vivekan says each and every yoga is independently capable of leading you to SQ, spiritual question, spiritual intelligence. But the best is combination of all the four yogas. How this can be done? You can go through the YouTube. Go through the YouTube. In my name you will get Harmony of Four Yogas for Harmony and Peace. There is a lecture delivered at AMA that is you will be getting that in YouTube. You will get all the details because I already have crossed my time. I suppose I don't have the watch but I feel I must have crossed the limit. But I am very happy to have talked to you. Let us try to develop IQ, EQ. More importantly, SQ. Let us try to have total personality development. Let us try to have concentration of mind. Let us try to practice the fourth of management. That will give success. That will give us happiness. That will give us peace. That will give us the purpose of life. Thank you very much.